Hello. In this video, we will look at the generic equipment phase instruction and equipment phase template from a user's point of view. But before we get started, I'd like to talk about our process controllers. The process controllers are specific controllers in our Compact Logix 5380 range and our Control Logix 5580 range. They have all the features of our non process controllers plus optimizations for process applications, things like optimized embedded instructions for process applications, organization, ownership and arbitration, sequence manager, and SAMR diagrams for process instructions, amongst many other things. The generic equipment phase instruction and equipment phase template fill the sequence implementation gap they provide a template for implementing sequence logic within your system that is hard coded in a process controller and they're only available to use in a process controller. It allows you to implement an ISA SATA equipment phase for batch systems and can equally be used in non batch systems. It follows the ISA SATA equipment phase state model and uses Logix 5000 phase manager technology. An example of the ISA S88 equipment phase state model can be seen in the diagram on the left. It greatly simplifies implementing equipment phases, and it also simplifies implementing recipe based systems that can be used with any of our recipe execution solutions. For example, process controller hard coded recipes, Logix Batch and Sequence Manager. Sequence Manager and our Factory Talk Batch comprehensive batch management solution. Now, it's important to note that when we say recipe, what we mean is a definition of what to do, the steps, when to do it, and the values each step should use. For example, charge 100 kilograms of water. When this completes, then mix at 60 RPM and heat to 60 degrees at the same time. You can also see an example of the HMI symbol and HMI faceplate for the equipment phase shown on the right. The template is deployed using Studio 5000 Application Code Manager and provides controller code that you fill in with what needs to happen in each state. A HMI symbol and faceplate that allows the operator workstation user to monitor and control the equipment phase from the operator workstation. A HMI and controller code interface for handling any parameter values the equipment phase needs and any report values it needs to make. It supports up to 48 parameters and 48 reports and provides error proofing for number values, supports selections from a design set of options and supports string values. It provides the ability to define default values of parameters and snapshot parameter values and then notify you if parameters change from the snapshotted value. It also provides the capability to control which parameters can be changed and optionally limit how much they can be changed from their snapshot value. So let's have a demonstration of the equipment phase in action. So here is our Plant PX demo system. In the demo system, we set up a premixer controlled by a batch system and where we can make premixes of material and for this premixer we have a number of equipment phases implemented. We're using another rock automation product to simulate um, the batch tank area where this premixer is a member of and that is Emulate 3D. In Emulate 3D we've built a model of our batch tank area using the tanks and pipes catalogue. Emulate 3D will simulate the process without having to put any additional logic in to do that specifically. And we've connected Emulate 3D to our PlantPX process controller using the IO mapping capability in Emulate 3D. For example, for each of the valves you can see on the top of the remixer here, Emulate 3D is reading the solenoid control output from our process controller. When it sees that change, it will simulate the valve opening and then it will send back um, the feedback for the valve, such as the open and close limit switches, when the valve reaches those positions. 
In our demonstration, we're going to have a look at the charge equipment phase that's been implemented. This controls charging of material into our premixer. We can charge water, caustic or acid by weight into the premixer. The HMI symbol for the charge equipment phase is shown here. And clicking on this opens up the faceplate for our equipment phase. We can see currently that this equipment phase is in the idle state. Um, it is in operator mode, so it can be controlled manually from the HMI and it's ready to be started. Again, this equipment phase could equally be controlled by a recipe execution system, something like factory door batch or one of the other recipe options that we spoke about previously. From the faceplate, we can open up the parameters that have been configured by the implementer for this equipment phase. And we can see that there are two parameters available. We have the material to charge. This is a selection from the valid values. We can only select between DI water, caustic and acid. And we have the amount to charge. This is the actual amount. And you can see here, again, there's limits as to what we can enter here. So let's set up this equipment phase to charge water into our premixer. So I'm going to select DI water. I'm going to say let's charge 400 kilograms of water into the premixer. You can see that the faceplate is showing us that these parameters are not currently matching the snapshot values. The snapshot values are the values that the equipment phase will use while it's running. So this is telling us that these are currently not loaded in. And if we were to run the phase, these values would not be used. It would instead use caustic and 300. So let's load these values into the snapshot so that they will be used by the equipment phase. You can also see that the implementer has set up default values for these parameters. And I can apply these default values using this button if I wish. I'm going to continue with these current snapshot values that we have. And then I'm going to go and run the equipment phase. And we can do that directly from the faceplate by using the start phase button here. But we can also show the detailed state display where we see the ISA S88 equipment phase state model. And we can control it from this faceplate as well. So let's start the phase and we'll see that the phase then transitions into the running state. The running state is now running in our controller and the sequence steps that our implementer has implemented in that running state are now running. On the faceplate, you can see that we are in currently step one of that sequence of steps. Um, and the implementer can also implement messages to be displayed for every step that they implement. Here we can see that the children are not acquired. So this is telling us that we, and the equipment phase has not acquired its children. The equipment phase framework uses the organization, ownership and arbitration framework that we discuss in detail in another video um, to simplify the task of ownership and making sure that I own the devices I want to use and also simplifying the task of understanding if any of the devices I'm using has an issue um, and I need to do something about it or go into hold um, so that the operator can go and resolve the issue. In, <clears throat> in order to own my devices, we have to tell the equipment phase to acquire them. This is something that could be done automatically by the sequence logic in the equipment phase. But in this case, the implementer has chosen to leave that to the user to do. So we have to, from the equipment phase, select this button here to acquire and tell the equipment phase to try and acquire its children. So we'll do that. Um, now we can see that um, there was an issue. The equipment phase was not able to acquire all of its children. And that has caused it to go into the hold state because there's an issue and it's gone into hold. Um, it's told the user that it's gone into hold with a step text. Um, and because we're using the organization ownership and arbitration framework, it's very easy now for the user to understand exactly what the issue is. They can do that first by bringing up the tree view of organization, ownership and arbitration. This view shows us that the equipment phase um, is using the following devices. Three valves, which charge the different materials into the top of the tank. Um, <clears throat> the high level switch for the tank. The current weight value for the tank 
and the dosing controller that's used to dose um, a certain amount of weight into the tank. This view is showing us that this particular device here, XV6010, has an issue with it. And if we want to understand what the symbols mean, we can bring up the help to see. Now, this particular symbol means that the object is not usable by the parent. So it's this particular device that's causing the issue. You can click on this device to bring up its faceplate and then fully understand what the issue is. From the faceplate, we can see that it's locked into operator mode. Locking something into operator mode prevents it from being acquired. So the equipment phase cannot take ownership of this device. This is easy to resolve from the faceplate. We can click on the operator status indicator and then we can switch it into just operator mode and not locked into operator mode. So we'll switch that into operator mode. And as soon as we do that, <clears throat> the equipment phase acquiring logic now acquires a device, puts it into program mode and then locks it into program mode. So that the operator can now put, not put it back into operator mode. So this device is now acquired. From the organization ownership and arbitration tree, we can see um, which devices own which devices. So for the charge phase, we can see that XV6010 is owned by that charge phase. And the same for XV6011 and XV6012. For devices that are monitor only and not controlled, they don't have ownership. So we can see here that the ownership is not applicable to these devices. A dosing controller is controllable, so again, that is now shown as owned by our equipment face. So having now successfully obtained all the devices that this equipment phase needs, and we can now ask the equipment phase to restart, run its restarting logic and go back into running. So let's do that from the faceplate. We can see now that it's clearing its totalizer, starting the totalizer, and it's now opening the DI water valve and it's now performing that charge on the vessel. The weight is now increasing. So here you can see that that charge now successfully completed and the weight has gone up by that much. You can see the dosing controller was used. Um, it has completed that dosing. It was asked to dose the 400 kilograms that we requested. Um, and there was an overshoot. I deliberately engineer the dosing controller to have an overshoot um, for demonstration purposes and to show this overshoot in reporting. The Wayscale dosing controller does have very sophisticated capability for automatic tuning of dosing um, and the ability to meet a pre-target and then switch to either a, a slower dosing or a pulse testing dosing mode. Um, so you can have very accurate dosing with it if you wish. As our equipment phase is now complete, um, it has reported um, some values as part of the implementation sequence that the implementer has put into our P-Controller. So let's go and have a look at those report values. Here we can see that the actual amount we charged was 429, so including the overshoot. The amount of lot, the lot of material charged is again 429. There was just one lot of water that was added. So this lot of weight matches the same amount. And the material ID of that lot is also been recorded. So let's now reset our phase back to idle so that it can now be used again to perform another charge. But let's this time, um, let's create an issue on the plant so that you can see what happens when devices fail to operate and how the user can easily identify what the issues are. So what I'm going to do is switch to my Emulate 3D model of my plant. I'm going to zoom in on the premixer. I'm going to select the caustic valve and I'm going to ask Emulate 3D to simulate a full stall alarm on this valve. This means now that if this valve is asked to open by our P controller, it will not respond and it will stay exactly where it is, generating a fault on our plant. So I'll switch back to our plant PX operator workstation um, and I will set up to do a caustic charge 
using the charge recruitment phase. So let's go into our phase parameters, set to do a caustic charge. This time we'll ask to do 250 kilograms. We'll load that into the snapshot. And then we'll ask the charge <coughs> phase to run. Notice that it goes straight into running. And we've already acquired the devices. It set up the waste scale dosing controller here with our 250 kilogram set point. And now it's trying to open the caustic feed valve. The caustic feed valve did not open because of the fault that we <coughs> set up in Emulate 3D. And when that has caused a device alarm. Now it may not be immediately obvious to the user of the equipment phase why this equipment phase has failed. And why has it gone into hold? What's going on? The organization, ownership and arbitration framework that the equipment phase uses makes it very easy for the user to now understand what's going on. We start by bringing up the organizational view from the equipment phase. And we can now see which particular devices have an issue that the charge equipment phase is using. In our case, we can see that it is the XV6011 caustic feed valve. From the help, we can understand what the indicators mean. We can see that the device is not ready to operate. And we can see that that device has an alarm which um, has returned to healthy, but requires acknowledgement. Clicking on the device brings up the faceplate for that device, so then we get all the information about the problem. Now we can see that this device has a full stall alarm active. From a diagnostic faceplate, we can see that's caused a device failure, and that a reset is required to clear this condition. Now we can perform this reset directly from the faceplate, but using organization, ownership and arbitration, we can also perform this reset from the charge equipment phase. If I tell the charge equipment phase to acknowledge and reset all its alarms, it will send that acknowledge and reset down to all its children. So let's do that. As you can see, that command was sent down, the valve reset, and everything's now returned to healthy. The phase is still in the hold state, and we need to send it a restart command um, to go back into restarting to get everything back into a good state and then running. Um, but if we don't do any more, that valve will not open and we'll be back in the same place. So let's go and <clears throat> fix the valve in our Emulate 3D model by removing the full stall fault. So this valve will now operate correctly. I'll just move the view so that we can see what's going on a bit better. We'll go back into our operator workstation. And then we will restart the phase. And then what I'm going to do is switch back to the Emulate 3D view so that you can actually watch the plant um, emulation in Emulate 3D. So here you can see the valve has commanded to open. Emulate 3D now responded after the valve transit time. Caustic was added to the tank and its level went up. If we go back to the operator, <coughs> operator workstation, we can see that that um, charge phase completed and closed the valve, which we saw then emulate 3D. And it's now moved to the complete state. We can see that the dosing controller had a set point of 250, um, <coughs> but we delivered 311. So we overshot a little bit. But again, remember, I'm deliberately setting up our dosing controller to overshoot so that we can see some overshoot values in the reports. And if we go back into the reports, you know, we can see that those values are reported um, with a lot ID of the caustic that was charged. So that finishes our introduction into equipment phases <coughs> and the equipment phrase framework. Please feel free to have a look at our videos on equipment modules and organization, ownership and arbitration for more details on those features. Thank you.